everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to give a technical review on Urtec 5016, which is the GAPS Huff and Fuff PVT experiment, written by Whitson. Before we get to the content, please be sure to like this video, subscribe so you can get more content in oil and gas and professional development topics, and please be sure to comment on the video below so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. Please be sure to hit that notification bell when you do subscribe because I upload every Friday and every Sunday. Every Friday is a professional development topic and every Sunday is a technical review. Well, let's get to the content. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. I'm going to talk about the gas huff and puff PVT experiment or URTEC 5016. This is written by Whitson and NTNU. I literally copied and pasted the objective from the abstract because I thought this was more well said than what I would have paraphrased. But to help increase the understanding of the HMP process from a fluid perspective, the paper suggests a novel PVT experiment that captures key characteristics of the process and provide all relevant stakeholders with the key performance indicator that's referred to as the gas HMP recovery efficiency. That's defined as the incremental volume of stock tank oil produced per volume of surface gas injected. So that's an incremental STB of oil produced per MMSCF injected. The methodology of the paper is the experiment initiates by charging a PVT cell with representative in situ fluid composition at reservoir temperature and initial reservoir pressure. A constant volume depletion experiment is then performed in pressure stages down to some minimum pressure and that represents the pressure in the HMP target volume at the time of implementation or close to the flow of when bottom hole pressure. The final fluid composition from the initial CVD is then used as a starting point of the HNP PVT experiment in which the constant volume injection or the huff period is performed to some maximum pressure by injecting a specified gas. The subsequent CVD or puff period is then performed back down to the starting pressure of the HNP PVT experiment or close to flowing bottom hole pressure, completing the first of several HNP cycles. The paper suggests several experiment conditions. I don't go over the introduction or some of the fundamentals of gas, H gas HNP because I think you should review the paper to go over those fundamentals. I just go straight to the gist of the paper. So some of the things that the paper suggests picking a representative in situ reservoir fluid composition for the well pad area of study, either obtained by sampling, by estimation, or then that was previously referenced in another paper. Setting the injection gas composition similar to the designated injection gas in the field. The composition of separator gas, CO2, is some makeup gas that consists of components like methane, ethane, and propane. And then selecting the reservoir temperature as the temperature for the experiment. Fixing the pressure cycling interval between a low pressure set by the flowing bottom hole pressure at the time of HMP implementation and a high pressure set by a local fracture gradient multiplied by some safety factor. Now here are the steps for the proposed experiment. Initialize the PVT cell by filling it with the selected initial fluid. Heat the cell to reservoir temperature and perform a CVD experiment that starts at the initial reservoir pressure and ends at the selected minimum pressure for the HMP part of the experiment. This represents the initial pressure depletion prior to HMP. The depleted mixture of the PVT cell is then subjected to the CVI experiment. The selected injection gas is used to do an isochoric pressurization of the PVT cell to the predetermined maximum pressure. This represents the injection or the huff period. After the gas is enriched, mixture has achieved equilibrium at Pmax. The subsequent CVD experiment is performed. The PVT cell is then subjected to an isochoric depressurization back to Pmin by removing the fluid from the top of the cell. This represents the production or the puff period. The following procedure stepping is suggested for the CVD part. If Pmax is greater than the saturation pressure, do a two-stage CVD where the first stage removal is a P1 at Psat and the second is a P2 equals Pmin. The Pmax is less than Psat, do a two-stage CVD where the first stage removal is at the average of Pmax and the Pmin and the second is at P2 equals Pmin. 
and then repeat steps two and three several times for the HMP cycles. Here are some views of the injection period, 1A and 1B, so these figures, the top left and the top right, show the case for an oil system and a gas condensate system, respectively, where the maximum pressure is greater than the saturation pressure of the final mixture after injection. Figures 2A and 2B show the case of an oil system, a gas condensate system, respectively, for which the maximum pressure is less than the saturation pressure for the final, final mixture after injection. So this is a constant volume injection for the case of Pmax is greater than Psat for an oil system, and then a constant volume injection for the case of Pmat is greater than Psat for a gas condensate system. And then you'll notice the difference for the CVI case for the Pmax less than Psat, and then for the CVI case of Pmax less than Psat. Now the production period. 3A and 3B show a case for the oil system and the gas condensate system in which the maximum pressure is greater than the saturation pressure for the final mixture after injection. And then 4A and 4B show the case of an oil system and a gas condensate system for which the maximum pressure is less than the saturation pressure of the final mixture after injection. So notice the difference of the oil and gas removed for Pmax greater than Psat, and then Pmax less than Psat. So this is the constant volume depletion. What's covered in the paper that I'm not gonna go more into detail is the QAQC of material balance checks in the K values, and then the interpretation of lab results such as the HMP EOR efficiency, recovery factor, saturation pressure, and relative uplift from mixing. I'm strictly going to cover the black oil results and the paper goes over most of this too, just because most of the stuff that I work in is in black oil reservoirs. Look at the properties of the black oil reservoir and the components of the black oil, and the composition of the black oil reservoir, especially its GOR, formation volume factor, saturation pressure, and its API, or the density of the fluid. The gas EOR efficiency decreases with the cycle. With enough cycles, the composition of the fluid in the PVT cell will converge towards the composition of the injection gas. There is less additional oil to recover each cycle, resulting in the incremental recovery per volume of gas injected to decline. One should expect the same decline in EOR efficiency in the field, and that's why some operators decide to move their compressor around between several wells or pads undergoing HMP. The relative uplift from mixing decreases with the decreasing EOR efficiency, which puts further emphasis on the importance of pure single-phase mixing on recovery. As observed, this behavior is also closely related to the saturation pressure, PSAT, and its magnitude relative to the pressure cycling interval. The saturation pressure increases with the cycle, which is expected for a system that is initially in oil. Reporting the recovery factor in an isolated manner has little to no value in the context of gas HMP EOR. And then the reservoir fluid in the PVT cell or pore space can change with phase type as observed between cycle five and six. In this example, it's caused by the injection gas amount being large combined with the large volume of heavier components being recovered to the surface. This has no practical significance, but speaks to the fluid complexity exhibited by the process. And the last slide that I wanted to show to everyone is some of the plots from the black oil reservoir results. So figure five shows the phase envelope of the reservoir from table one. Then figure six shows the swell test of the reservoir oil given in table one and injection gas. So that's your saturation pressure at injection gas mole fraction. Then you have cumulative EOR efficiency versus the cycle, saturation pressure versus the cycle at your top right, and then you have your recovery factor versus cycle, and then you have relative uplift mixing from the cycle. So notice that the cumulative EOR efficiency goes down with subsequent cycles. Saturation pressure versus the cycle goes up. 
the recovery factor versus the cycle also goes up. Then the relative uplift from mixing versus the cycle goes down. Then you'll notice in figure eight, which you've moved to the right side of the slide, pressure cycling interval is below the saturation pressure. So this section talks about the importance of the phase mix or the pressure cycling. And if you'll notice that your P min and your P max and P saturation is the most, is the highest. Relative uplift from mixing is 0%. The fluid system is oil in table one and the injection gas consisting of your 65% methane, 20% ethane and 15% propane. Then you have pressure cycling in the interval above the first contact minimum miscibility pressure, where your P saturation is less than your minimum miscibility pressure at first contact. Then a relative uplift from mixing is 100%. The fluid system in the oil is from what I showed before, an injection gas consisting of what I mentioned before with ethane, with methane, ethane, and propane respectively. So here are some of the conclusions from the paper. This captures key characteristics of the gas HMP process, which are injection periods with associated pressure buildup, production periods with associated pressure drawdown, cyclical nature in a way of quantifying oil and gas versus the number of cycles and or volume, moles of gas injected with a high degree of accuracy in the overall material balance. They provide all relevant stakeholders with a key performance indicator to the HMP recovery efficiency. It's a practical way of communicating incremental uplift per cost. This can either be used directly to calculate gas HMP recovery efficiency, recovery factors, and relative uplift for mixing, or used as an input as EOS model development. That's everything that I wanted to share with you all regarding the gas HMP Huff and Puff Experiment paper, or ERTEC 5016. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe so you can get more content in oil and gas and professional development topics, and please be sure to comment on the video on the YouTube platform so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen to this presentation, and I'll see you in the next one.